You're listening to Win Win, an entrepreneurial community with your host, Ben Wolf. And welcome to Win Win, an entrepreneurial community. Once again, I am your host, Ben Wolf. Uh, we're going to learn from our guest today how to build your business to sell and then exit rich. That is the topic. Remind everybody to please pause this for a second. We leave a review, like, comment, wherever it is on whatever platform you're listening to or watching this on. And I want to get into introducing my guest today with that, which is uh, that our guest today is the founder and CEO of Siler Tucker Incorporated. Uh, she is the author of Exit Rich, the 6P method to selling your business for a huge profit, which is slated for release next month. And the link to getting that is going to be uh, on Amazon is going to be in the, uh, in the comments below. And uh, that is also available for pre-order. Uh, her firm has represented over 500 businesses who wanted to sell. And for her clients, she has a 98% sell rate. You could find out more about her at SeilerTucker.com. That's S-E-I-L-E-R, Tucker.com. And with that, I give you Michelle Seiler Tucker. And let me know if I mispronounced your name. <laughs> Luckily for you, you did not. <laughs> okay, good. We could always retake if we needed to. But <laughs> Thank you for having me on. My pleasure. Uh, and so I want to ask you to just give everybody here, like I, I do with all my guests, a little bit of context for like where you came from and how to, you know, how you got to be sharing about the, you know, the knowledge and information that you're going to be sharing with the people today. Sure. So I've always been an entrepreneur. I've owned many different businesses. I did get into franchise sales, franchise development, franchise consulting, and was um, an equity partner in different franchisors um, businesses. And I had so many buyers come to me wanting to buy an existing business. And I kept saying, no, we only have startups. And then I'm like, why am I saying no? I should be saying yes. And that's really what led me to start my M&A practice almost 20 years ago. And, um, you know, we first started selling small businesses, but then very quickly started selling businesses $10 million and up. I've actually personally sold 500 businesses. My team, my firm has sold over a thousand. Mm. We've done thousands upon thousands of valuations. I learned very quickly that what Steve Forbes says is true, that eight out of 10 businesses will not sell. 80% of businesses do not sell. And Steve Forbes endorsed my book, Exit Rich. So I learned way back then that if I don't fix the businesses, if I don't grow them, if I don't put them on a build to sell model, I'm going to starve to death. So we really specialize in buying, selling, fixing, growing. I buy businesses and flip them. I partner with business owners, investing my core competencies, um, my resources, and my capital. And I fix their business, grow their business, put them on a build to sell model. So at any given time on five to different, different companies that I'm building to sell. So we really specialize in buying, selling, fixing, growing, have about a 98% closing rate on all offers we write. And we typically get our clients 20 to, 20 to 40% more than what the business appraises for. Wow. That is, uh, <laughs> that is, a, that is a lot there. Uh, any particular, <laughs> out of curiosity, before I get to the stuff I was, I was hoping to cover, is any particular uh, industries or types of businesses that you, you tend to work with the best? We have sold businesses in pretty much every vertical you can imagine. We are industry agnostic. We are more focused on EBITDA. So our sweet spot is EBITDA. It's over a million dollars. Okay. Now my team does sell smaller businesses, um, but my focus, my sweet spot are those businesses over a million dollars and up in EBITDA. So we have businesses right now that we're selling for, we've got one that we're selling between 60 to 70 million. That's in agriculture. We have another one in construction for 80 million. We got a pharmaceutical company. We're selling between 30 to 50 million. So kind of all over the board, but we're definitely industry agnostic. Right. Understood. So, you know, I think like for the people who are listening to this, many of them are thinking that, you know, they're thinking they would like to sell one day, you know, you know, whether that's soon, you know, whether that's in three to five years could be, maybe it's something they want to do further out. But I guess what people might be not understand and might want to know is what's the difference between the way they might be running their business now, or like with it, let's say without having sales specifically in mind 
and when they're building to sell? Like what, what's the difference in how you're running the business? Today? Well, first of all, the number one reason the businesses are not selling. If you think about that statistic, if you really just pause and think about that statistic, the 80% of businesses don't sell, that's pretty startling. That should scare most business owners. And the number one reason that businesses don't sell is because business owners don't think about their exit strategy. They don't plan their exit strategy. They don't think about selling until a catastrophic event has occurred, whether that's internal or external, internal being health issues, partners dispute, partner death, divorce, their death, you know, external is this pandemic we're in. And when they get in, into one of these catastrophic events and they want to sell, that's the worst time to sell your business because your business is trending downward. Best time to sell when it is when your business is in, in its prime and, tr and trending up. Plus, when they're in a catastrophic event, they're like, I want $50 million for my company, and their EBITDA is $100,000. $100, so you really have to plan for your exit. You can't just wake up one day and say, oh, I'm going to sell. You know, I had a lady call me from Dallas, Texas a, a, a couple months ago. My husband dropped out of a heart attack, left her with a mountain of debt. She knows nothing about the business, nothing about the financials. And asked me if I could sell his business. He has no employees. He only has subcontractors and all the data is in his head. So when he died, the business died. You really should be planning your exit from day one of buying or starting your business. It's financial suicide not to. Even if you're not going to sell your business, if you build it as if you are, if you build it as a sellable asset, it's going to be sustainable. It's going to be scalable. And it's going to be a lot more profitable. And you won't become part of the statistics of businesses going out of business. Right, probably a lot more fun too when when you're not you know when it's not an 80 hour a week job not just a business well and that's the other problem you know most business a lot so many business owners have built themselves a glorified job which they go to work at every day versus a business that actually works for them and buyers don't want to buy a job they want to buy a business that's the number one reason the businesses are not sellable because the business is a thousand percent dependent upon the business owner right so so what do people need to be doing now? So to be building yep. to sell, to be thinking about selling, what are, what are a few of the things, I'd love some stories to throw in, what are some of the things that people you know, should be doing now if they're thinking about building to sell or running their business to eventually sell? So the first thing, you know, first things first, I tell all my business owners, you need to plan your exit. And, you know, follow the GPS that we call it the ST GPS exit model that we talk about in my book, Exit Rich. When you want to drive somewhere, Ben, what do you do? What does ST you? stand for? Siler Tucker. Ah, makes sense. <laughs> ben, when you want to drive somewhere, what do you do? You pull out your phone, you go to Google Maps, you plug in your? Your destination. Your destination. Yep. That's the problem with business owners. They don't plan to fail, they fail to plan. They have no destination. So they drive around in circles, they drive up and down the financial hills, they end up broke, they end up for selling for pennies on a dollar, they end up closing their business. So all business owners need to have a destination. And I tell all, all my clients, pick a number. Business owners always get hung up on a number. Just pick a number. Let's say you want to sell for $20 million. That's your desired sales price. Great. Now we've started our plan. What does right. the GPS exit model need to know next? It needs to know where you're starting from. Mm -hmm. What is your current location? What is your current evaluation? Ben, most business owners have never had their business evaluated. They don't get evaluation until they think so about you, selling. So you, you recommend starting off with evaluation right away? Absolutely. You know, you go- Even, even if it's a glorified job, they just go ahead and do it. You it need to you get evaluation check. because you need to know where you're starting from. Right. You know, you go to the doctor once a year to get an annual checkup to make sure your heart's still ticking, you're still kicking. You drive your car to a mechanic to get an annual tune-up, but you take your most valuable asset and you ignore it. You have no idea what it's worth uh -huh. and you should get evaluation, an annual valuation checkup, annual valuation checkup, because there are events to increase valuation, there are events to decrease valuation. You should always know what your business is worth, just like you always want to know what your financial asset portfolio is worth, right? You want to know what your business is worth. So let's say you want to sell for 20 million, you're worth 5 million. The next thing you need to know is what's my time frame. Let's say you want to do it in 10 years. So now you kind of have a sort of a plan. You want to sell for $20 million, you're worth 5 million. You want to do this in 10 years. The next step you need to know is who are my buyers going to be? Now notice mm -hmm. I say buyers, not buyer. Okay, <laughs> so many that? clients, so many, well, so many clients come to me and say, Michelle, I have the buyer. Can you represent me? And I'm like, no, because I can promise you that buyer is going to fall through. You have less than a 5% chance of that buyer actually closing on the sale of your business. Something's going to go wrong in due diligence. It's, they're going to walk away. You're going to have no backup buyers. You always want to make sure you have backup buyers, number one. And number two, 
how do you maximize value if you can't create competition with a party of one? <laughs> you want to be able to create a competition. You want to be able to create a bidding war. That's how you get the highest price. So there's five different types of buyers. 90% of buyers are first-time buyers. They mm -hmm. buy small restaurants, coffee shops, dry cleaners. They don't buy $20 million companies. Mm -hmm. Second type of buyer is turnaround specialists. They buy distressed assets. The third type of buyer are PEGs, private equity groups. They buy based on platforms and add-ons. Mm -hmm. A platform is, let's say they want to get in food manufacturing. They won't even consider your business unless you have at least $3 million and up in EBITDA. Earnings prefer interest, taxes, depreciation, amortization. Let's say they're already in food manufacturing. They want to buy a seasoning company. They'll consider that seasoning company underneath a million dollars in EBITDA. The fourth type of buyer is strategic slash competitor. They pay the highest multiple because they're paying for synergies. They're paying for databases, contracts, something that's going to catapult their business to the next level. And then the last type of buyer is sophisticated entrepreneurs who are industry agnostic. They chase EBITDA like a Warren Buffett, like a Richard Branson. So mm -hmm. those are your five types of buyers. Now you need to reverse engineer your plan and say, okay, where do my numbers need to be? If I want to sell for $20 million, what does my gross need, gross revenues need to be? My COGS, operating expense, most importantly, where's the EBITDA need to fall? Your EBITDA is going to have to be between 3.5 to $4 million, depending upon your synergies to sell for $20 million. Mm -hmm. Then you need to know, well, what are the characteristics? What are the synergies that these buyers are looking for? What are they willing to pay top dollar for? And then you build the business to meet their specific criteria. Ben, it's really no different than when you start a business and you say, I have a widget. Here's my widget. Here's my direct target market. <clears throat> Same thing with building your business to sell. Here's my widget. Here's my direct target market. I'm going to build to meet their specific criteria. Right. Widget Does is, it make the, sense? is the business. Yeah, it makes sense. Can yeah. you tell a, can you tell a story of, of somebody where they, you know, just uh, how, how you see the progression of that reverse engineering of identifying just one of those example target markets you mentioned, let's say a competitor and, and then working backwards to how do they, what do they do today, three years earlier, so to speak, to go and meet that moment of the future? Well, I've never met a business owner that's actually planned their exit strategy like they should. <laughs> I have one company. Well, if they're working with you, I assume they are. <laughs> well, yeah, when they start working with me, but nobody has. We've got one company right now that's planning their exit strategy, and they are actually um, just signed up for our Road to Sell program. So we're working with them to um, real, first and foremost identify you know, where they are in the GPS exit model where the, what their business is worth right, day, right now and what their bottlenecks are. So um, I have a company that I'm partnered with and we are growing their business to sell for about 10 to $15 million in the next two to three years. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then, you know, so we have another company that we're working with, um, pharmaceutical company. Actually, they just read our book <laughs> and he's taken the entire book as a workbook and then integrated into his business plan and into his um, exit plan. And um, we are getting on track to sell his business between 30 to 50 million. Wow. What, uh, I guess, you know, if, if you can, I would love to hear another story on like, I don't know, like what kind of changes, I don't know, what kind of changes is somebody doing for, for a sale? Okay, so let, let me now? take you through the infrastructure because once you mm -hmm. understand the infrastructure, maybe you'll understand how it works. So okay. first and foremost, you know, I we take we identify our clients' bottlenecks, and then we take them through what we call the six cylinders, the six P's. Businesses need to run on all six cylinders, all six P's. Number one is people. The number one reason, other than not planning your exit, that your business is not going to sell, is because you don't have a business; you have a job. And a business is a hundred percent predicated on you. Dentist, I'll give you another story. Dentist comes to me, been in business 50 years. Three dental hygienists. They just happen to be his daughters. <laughs> and I said, look, I can sell your business, but I'm not gonna be able to maximize value. And the, the, the purchase of your business is going to be contingent upon you and your daughter staying on two to three years. There will be clawbacks, there will be earn outs, there will be you know, um, things written into the contract that are going to mitigate the buyer's loss in case you leave. And he said, honey, we're not staying. And I said, honey, you're not selling <laughs> because when you leave, right. the patients leave. Right. So the first P is people. You don't build a business, you build people and people build a business. 
So we really work with entrepreneurs, and I'm sure you do this too, to get them to focus on their strengths and hire their weaknesses. Entrepreneurs feel like they have to have their hands in every pie and every pot. And the problem with that, they feel like they have to control everything. Well, you'll never grow unless you let go of the control. Right. So we work with them to hire the right people, to get them in the right seats and ask the who question. Who opens the door? Who handles customer service, marketing, legal, manufacturing, logistics, environmental? The list goes on and on. The clue, though, is you should never be next to the who because we really want the business to run without you. Right. The owners are always the bottleneck. You will never grow the business beyond what you can grow the owner. And then they also have to get a, a, a layer of management team. You know, you and I spoke before the show about integrators. I can't even stress how important it is, how imperative. I mean, it's everything. The visionary, the entrepreneur is a visionary. They're usually not integrators. They usually don't make good managers. They're usually not very good operators. Right. <laughs> they need that integrator to pull all of their ideas out of their head and really implement it, integrate it into the departments and sort the fabric of their company. Mm -hmm. Right. And then you need that layer of management. So if you're going to try to sell a $20 million company, you know, we're selling a company right now between 60 to 70 million. They have 300 employees, been in business since 1998. But guess what? The business is 1000% still dependent upon the owner. Mm -hmm. The owner has a relation, the key relationships, plus all the data is in the owner's head. So we're not selling 100%. We get, we're only going to sell probably 80% of the company hmm. to retain the owner. So people is huge. The next P is, is product. Um, when I wrote my very first book, you probably don't know this because most people don't. When I wrote my very first book in 2013 called Serial Business for More Than It's Worth, and I did the research and learned that 95% of all startups will go out of business. That first one to five years were the most risky. You know that, right? We all know that. But when I wrote Exit Rich in 2019 and 2020, here's what you don't know. The business landscape has changed dramatically. It's actually flip-flopped. Now only 30% of startups will go out of business. Only 30% in that first one to five years. But the businesses that bid out of 27.6 million companies, the businesses have been in business 10 years or longer, 70% of them are at risk of going out of business. Seven, zero. Why are longer existing businesses more at risk? So let me explain why. So the media company talks about all the big public companies. Toys R Us in business 75 years goes out of business. Kmart, Montgomery Ward, Disney's are closing their stores. Um, Pier 1 goes out. Steinmark goes out. Godava Chocolate closes down 1,500 locations. GNC closes down 900 locations. But what they're not telling us about, all the private business owners, on every street corner in every town in every state across a great nation, these business owners are dropping like flies. They're exiting poor. They're selling for pennies on the dollar, closing their business, following bankruptcy. Why? Because the number one reason that businesses go out of business is because they stop doing what I call AIM. AIM. Always innovate and market. They stop innovating. They stop innovating. So, so that's, blockbuster... That's the so for those that are around 10 years or more, it's a lack of innovation. All, almost all the examples you gave are retail. Um, yeah, but but I guess there's, that's a lot, the there's a lot of other examples that are not retail. I mean, look at all the manufacturing businesses that went out of business. There's tons of businesses that right. are not retail. They're going out of business. What happens is business owners become complacent. They're married to their original idea. They maybe don't have any new blood in the company. Right. They're not innovating. And guess what? Consumers, consumers' habits, bias habits change. Right. Gen X doesn't buy the same way baby boomers buy. Millennials certainly don't buy the way that, that Gen X and baby boomers buy. So whoever makes it easiest for the consumer to purchase products and services is the company right. that's winning. Amazon is winning because they make it so easy. You can practically buy a horse on Amazon and have it delivered to your house in two days. Right. So you, you got to innovate. I mean, it's so important to innovate and market, and you're either growing or dying. You know this. You're either growing or dying. Toys R Us did nothing different in 75 years. Blockbuster had the opportunity to compete with Netflix. In fact, they had the opportunity to buy Netflix. I know, I know. And they didn't Crazy do it. Crazy story. You know? So, pro so product. It, exactly. So you got to ask yourself, is your product, your service, your industry on the way up or on the way out? Is it thriving or dying? Do you have an Amazon? And if you do, 
this is where business owners make mistakes. You sell in your prime. You sell in your prime. To businesses have life cycles just like people do. In Toys R Us Prime in 2015, they were worth $11 billion. 2015, mm. they filed bankruptcy. 2017, they closed all 1,500 locations worldwide. You sell when you're in your prime. Right, so wow. product, you know, so I always tell my clients, you know, you really need to ask yourself three questions. Amazon did this back in the 90s. Ask yourself, what business are you in? Amazon did that. And they said, we're in a book fulfillment business. We fulfill book orders. Number two, what do you do better than everybody else? What's your USP? What's your unique selling proposition? What's your core competencies? Amazon said, we do fulfillment better than everybody else. Number three, the most obvious question is what should you be doing? <laughs> what should, what business should you be in? What business should you be in? And Amazon said, we should be in a fulfillment business, fulfilling products for everybody, not just books. Those three questions transform them into the multi-billion dollar worldwide conglomerate that they are today. Can you imagine if they didn't ask those questions? Yeah, they'll have another Barnes and Noble online. That's all they'd be. <laughs> yeah, so product. And then the next one is processes. Any questions? On on that? No, I mean, that, I mean that's, that's very clear. And, it, you know, it actually lines up you know, pretty evenly with, uh, you know, I know you've read traction, you're familiar with the OS, uh, they have the six, the six key components of the business that, uh, you know, talk about products. I have that never read have... traction, but I'm familiar with traction because I've met several of the traction coaches at different uh, masterminds and different speaking engagements. Yeah, no, it's uh, definitely, definitely worth reading. Get Gina Wickman's uh, book traction on the subject, but it, you know, it. break down the business into <laughs> <laughs> the six key components, you know, uh, people, you know, people, vision, process, uh, data, uh, issue resolution, and traction, and so it's just interesting. You also have six, even though they're obviously not exactly the same, but no, they're but definitely it makes a not the sense. same. Yeah, the, they make sense because that's what you build a sustainable, scalable business on, and you're not going to be able to sell the business unless you have people in place, unless you are in the right product, right industry, and processes. You know. Uh, let's talk about processes real quick. Processes are kind of like exit strategy. You know this, you're an integrator. Most business owners never think about process until something bad happens in their company. You're like, oh my God, we need a process for that. <laughs> it's a little late. <laughs> right. You need a process before that. <laughs> you know, so you really, and I think most business owners, I don't think I know, most business owners get this wrong because they, a lot of owners build their processes around their own agenda versus the customer experience. Mm hmm and you need to really identify what you want your customers to experience and build your processes around that. Right. Wow. It's kind of like the movie, The Founder. Did you ever watch The Founder with the McDonald brothers? Yeah. Yeah. With uh, Michael Keaton. Yeah. Yeah. Great movie, right? Yeah. Yeah. I loved it. I mean, it was kind of depressing in the second half, but I, I liked it a lot. <laughs> oh, you mean when he stole McDonald's from the McDonald's? Brothers? Yeah. He, like, he steals them and then he just becomes all self-absorbed and, you know, whatever. <laughs> yeah. So, but, you know, McDonald Brothers designed or, came, or created, you know, a fast food restaurant back in the 50s. And they said, we want to design the fast food system and the process is around our customer experience. We want our customers to experience great tasting food that's fast and hot within 30 seconds or less. And that was done way back then. And you can mm -hmm. eat at McDonald's anywhere in the world and still get the same experience. Plus right. they can fire somebody and have somebody trained and hired within 30 minutes working the drive-through. <laughs> so the processes must be designed with the customer experience in mind, right. because here's the bottom line. You need, to, you need to create wow experiences for your clients. If you don't, somebody else will, and you want raving fans in your business. So business owners, stop asking clients, what do you want? What do you need? How can I make it easier for you to do business with us? Right. And of course, those processes need to be productive and efficient because they can make or break your company. And you need to be well papered. You know, there's so many companies that don't even have policy and procedure manuals or SOP mm -hmm. checklist. Right. No, that's uh, that's great stuff. It's super valuable. And and I wanna I wanna ask you about your book in, in one second. Obviously, people can find out about you and, and what you do for clients at Siler Tucker, S E I L E R Tucker.com. Uh, but I want to ask a uh, last question is on the book that's coming out next month. Exit rich uh, is, I guess, why'd you write it? And what could people expect to, you know, to find if they pick up this book? Yeah. So the reason I wrote exit rich is what I just told you that, that the business landscape has flip flopped. Now it used to be that if you made it past the five years, you were going and you're going to be in business forever. Right. Well, it's not that way anymore. 
So with 70% of businesses going out of business, small business is the backbone of the U.S. economy. And um, if you, we lose small business, we lose jobs, we lose jobs, we lose spending power, more, more small businesses close. I wrote, we wrote the book, Sharon Lecter and I wrote the book because business owners really need to build a business that will run without them. They need to build it on the proper infrastructure. They need to build a sustainable business that they can scale and actually have a sellable asset one day because there are so many bankruptcies or so many businesses closing and so many business owners not being able to, to exit rich. That's why we wrote the book. Steve Forbes endorsed a book saying it's a gold mine for those entrepreneurs because they leave way too much money on the table when they go to sell their business. Sharon Lecter is my co-author who wrote Rich Dad Poor Dad with Robert Kiyosaki. And um, she's a five-time New York Times bestselling author, CPA, financial literacy expert, and advisor to many presidents. Plus her husband is an IP attorney. See, we didn't even get into the fourth P, which is proprietary. Mm. Proprietary is the highest value driver and will get you a much higher multiple on the sale of your business. And um, Kevin Harrington, the original Shark on Shark Tank, wrote the foreword. So the first half of the book is about ST, the, the GPS exit, how to plan your exit, seller sanity check, exercises to determine when you should sell your business. Mm -hmm. um, the five different types of buyers are negotiables, non-negotiables, the synergies that they pay for, the mm -hmm. six Ps. And then the second half is all about valuations, normalization of financials, packaging, you know, negotiations, et cetera. Um, and then there's also build a sell chapter in there. So Exit Rich comes out June 23rd or June 22nd. You don't have to wait till June 22nd. You can actually Go to exitrichbook.com, get Exit Rich Now. We will email you the digital download immediately for $24.79, which is less than Amazon, and we'll ship the hardcover to your doorstep. You like stories? Here's a case study. We just had a pharmaceutical company buy the book, used it, printed out on ledger sheets, is using it as a workbook, integrating it into their growth strategy, into their exit strategy. Um, hiring us to build it to sell, to sell between 30 to 50 million. He says the best book he's ever read. It's got more tips in there that he has never heard anywhere. Right. Well, it's and awesome. Then, yeah. yeah, go ahead. Well, I was just going to say, and anybody that buys a book before June 22nd, we'll give him a lifetime membership into Exit Rich Book Club, where there's video content of us taking deep dives and into different strategies and techniques that we've been doing over the last 20 years, over thousands of businesses sold plus documents, documents to run your company, documents to sell your company. So we have sample um, employee handbooks, org charts, policy and procedure manuals, sample letter of intents, purchase agreements, due diligence checklists, closing docs. All these documents are there for your review and download. It will cost you thousands upon thousands of dollars if you want to your attorney to recreate. You can use them, just take the name Siler Tucker out. <laughs> I had a lady email them to me yesterday and said, can I use these? And I said, take out my name and you can use them. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. And then we're giving you a 30 day free membership in the club CEOs, which is an entrepreneurship mastermind where we help business owners pivot and build that sustainable, scalable and sellable assets. So they too can exit rich all for $24 and 79 cents at exitrichbook.com. Got it. Thank you. And I, I didn't even mention that book, so that uh, website earlier. So thank yeah, you. Don't go to Exit Amazon Rich. because you won't get all the value of it at Amazon. Plus it's more expensive on Amazon. <laughs> okay. So, you know, it's, I'll switch out, I'll switch out the link in the, uh, I'll switch out the link in the description to, to not use the Amazon link then. So, uh, so perfect. Sounds good. I appreciate you making the time to come on today. You know, I, I know that you have a lot going on with the book coming out next month and everything else that you're doing with your clients. So I really appreciate it. Again, exit exitrichbook.com, I guess that's our new exit link that we're going to mention. Exitrichbook.com. And my main website is silertucker.com. Awesome. Thank you so much for coming out. I really appreciate it. Thank you, Ben. Thanks for having me. My pleasure. We'll see you later and see everybody else on the other side. Thanks a lot. Bye. You're listening to Win Win, an entrepreneurial community with your host, Ben Wolf. Ben Wolf.